Dominion is important here then. Let's find out a little bit more about what the dominion spirit is. The program of God then is simple. One, to rule the visible world from the invisible world through the invisible spirit living in the visible body on the visible earth. That's God's program. In other words, God wants to rule the seen world from the unseen world where he is by living in the unseen spirit of man in the seen body that is on the seen earth. God's program then was to rule the invisible from the invisible through the invisible living in the visible on the visible. Is that indivisible? <laughs> Put it another way. God's program was to have his kingdom come and his will be done on earth as it is in heaven through his children, which is a family of sons and offspring. That's God's program. Very simple, very straightforward. God, therefore, wanted you to have what I call the dominion leadership mandate. Write these terms down, please. Here's what the Hebrew word dominion means. Dominion means, number one, to govern. Secondly, to control. Thirdly, to rule. Fourthly, to manage. Fifth, to master something. And sixth, to lead. All of these are important to you because that is what God intended you to do. God intended and originally desired for you to, to actually become a governor. Let's go back and put those words in the sentence God wrote about you. It says in Genesis 1.26, And God said, Let us what? Make man in our own image and in our likeness, and let them what? Govern, rule, lead, master, control, and subdue the earth. In other words, every human being on this planet was created to do that list. Let me say one thing here, very important, very important. Whatever God creates something to do, he designs it for. I've said this for the last 25 years and people still miss it. Whatever God creates something to do, he designs it with. In other words, when God creates the bird to fly, he puts flight ability in the bird. When God creates the fish to swim, he put the ability to swim in the fish. If God creates you to dominate, he put the spirit of controlling, governing, rulership, leadership, and management in you. That's why every human being naturally resists oppression. Because we are designed to rule, not to be ruled. We are designed to govern and not to be governed. We are designed to manage things and not to be managed. We are designed to lead and not to follow. Now, you may not want to admit this, but that is your experience every day. That is why you hate to be told what to do. Am I right? Don't you hate when people tell you, even your spouse. Cook me some food. Wait a minute. Or the office boss says, type the letter and do it now. And all of a sudden, something goes off quietly on the inside. Even though you type and you think like crazy. You, you know, you type again, but there's the spirit. Even as a child, your mom says, sit down. And you say, no. And you say, sit down. And she, you say, no. Your mom says, I'll whoop you. You say, mm, no. And you still say no while you're sitting down. Why? Deep in your spirit, there is the spirit of what? Government, rulership, control, management, and leadership and mastering. You are designed for that. That's why the Holy Spirit himself will not violate God's original spirit he put in you. The Holy Spirit does not really control your life. He convicts you, he will guide you, he will lead you, but never drag you. Can I hear an amen? amen. He himself will not violate the spirit he put inside of you because he gives you whatever he designed you to do. So leadership is not something you really have to 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 to, to to study is something you got to discover already on the inside. Everybody in this place was born to lead. You were designed to master. You were equipped to control. And you have the spirit of leadership. This is why every person that God has called through the Bible's history and story, he always addresses them based on what he knows about them. He told Abraham, you are a father of great nation. He told Sarah, you are a mother of nation. He told that, that old coward uh, Gideon, you are a mighty man of valor. He told David, you are a king when he was a kid. He told Joseph, you are a ruler while he was a slave. God always speaks to the real you, not what people say about you. Tell your neighbor if you knew who I really was, you'd be glad to sit next to me right now. Clap your hands and thank God. You are a leader. It's birth on the inside. On your
your job when you go to work in the morning. Stop walking around like as if you are an employee. You are a, a deployee. <laughs> in other words, you were not born to be employed. You were born to be deployed, to release your leadership ability. A job is God's opportunity for you to release your leadership in, and they should be privileged to have you work in there with your anointed gifts. They can't pay you enough, so don't complain about the salary, because you work more than what they could ever pay you. Clap your hands, somebody. So work is not about salary. It's about deployment. Because your leadership cannot be bought nor paid for. Can I hear an amen? amen. That's why you feel good when people give you a, a, a title. Why? Because they're getting close to the real you. When you get promoted, you feel good. Why? You feel good not because of the money. You feel good because all of a sudden, your spirit of leadership begins to rise a little higher. That's why God calls you sons of God. But you ain't there yet in your mind, you see. You are sons of God. You're not just Christians. You are sons of God. That means you are royal blood. You are a child of a king. That means you are a prince and a princess. But you ain't there yet. Because your mentality ain't there yet. You're still acting like the prodigal son. You want to be a servant. I'm come to tell you here that God wants you to lead and to master and to govern and to control. And that's why my attitude is the way it is. I have been convicted about this in my own life. That's why you don't have to wonder about me. I believe I am all of that. My job is to get you to believe you are all of that. Tell your neighbor, I'm all of that. Come on, sit up and wag your say, I'm all of that. Come on, praise his name, somebody. I am all of that list. That's what God says he created me to be. Can I hear an amen? So when the fish see me, they're supposed to get nervous. Look at that list. When the birds see me, they're supposed to bow and say, yes, chief. That ain't funny. Trees that grow in the field are supposed to respect me. Why? I am their master. I control them. I am their governor. This is why we should never oppress people, control people, depress people, oppress people, suppress people. We are attempting to do something that God wouldn't even do himself. 